Is Yellowstone gonna blow? That's the question. Super volcano is basically a name that was made up for a volcano that has at some point in the past produced the largest style of eruption. In the western region of the United States lies a dormant giant. It remains in a slumber, occasionally showing signs of stirring, but hasn't fully awakened in many years. However, when it eventually rouses, it may unleash an unprecedented display of power. The last time this colossal force awakened was approximately 640,000 years ago, causing a world-shaking event. During that supervolcanic eruption, an astounding 1,000 cubic kilometers of ash and lava were forcefully expelled, surpassing the eruption of Mount St. Helens in 1980 by a staggering factor of 8,000. The eruption left behind a massive sunken crater, or caldera, burying an area of 1,500 square miles. And now, renowned scientist Neil deGrasse Tyson has revealed that officials at Yellowstone National Park have recently made a significant discovery. They have detected a discernible portion of magma that has begun to pulsate. This finding has raised concerns about whether this ticking time bomb will eventually explode. Could it potentially erupt during our lifetimes? Neil deGrasse Tyson raises thought-provoking questions about the pulsating magma and its implications. Join us as we delve into this alarming warning regarding Yellowstone National Park, where officials have just identified this massive pulsating chunk of magma. Deep beneath Yellowstone National Park, a vast expanse spanning Wyoming, Idaho and Montana, powerful geothermal forces are at work. These titanic forces, akin to the breaths of a slumbering giant, drive the existence of around 10,000 geothermal features in the park's animal-filled woodlands. The heart of this geological activity lies in northwestern Wyoming, where the majority of Yellowstone is situated. Here beneath the surface resides a region of scorching molten and semi-molten rock known as magma. As magma flows into a reservoir called the magma chamber, located 6 to 10 kilometers, 4 to 6 miles beneath the park, the surrounding ground swells and rises in response to the increasing pressure and heat. However, as the magma cools and solidifies, the ground begins to collapse. Volcanologists have diligently monitored this phenomena since 1923 and have observed that between 2004 and 2009, the ground rose by approximately 25 centimetres, 9.8 inches. However, in 2010, a shift occurred and the ground started sinking. The gradual and consistent growth over the years has led many scientists to speculate about the possibility of an impending eruption at Yellowstone. Concerns have been raised about the potential magnitude of such an eruption, given the continuous expansion observed. In the broader Yellowstone region, magma, which is molten rock beneath the Earth's crust, exists near the surface due to the mantle's thermal convection. The movement of tectonic plates over these hot regions results in volcanic activity, leaving a trail behind. The volcanic hotspots beneath the Yellowstone area has left volcanic deposits across the Idaho Snake River Plain. And within the current Yellowstone caldera, which is 50 kilometres or 30 miles wide and 70 kilometres or 45 miles long, remnants of the most recent eruption can be found in an area called the Lava Creek Tuff. The caldera, located in northwest Wyoming at the heart of the Yellowstone National Park, is a result of a massive volcanic eruption that occurred 640,000 years ago. The park, covering an area of 3,472 square miles, is home to numerous geothermal features fueled by magma and hot fluids beneath the surface. The Norris Geyser Basin, northwest of the caldera, showcases over 500 hydrothermal features that undergo daily variations. In addition, a significant geological transformation has been occurring for the last 20 years. The region surrounding the basin has experienced irregular bursts of eruption and contraction, resulting in ground movement. Understanding the exact cause of these movements in a chemically active area like Yellowstone is challenging. However, recent scientific research, discussed by Neil deGrasse Tyson, suggests that Norris has likely been a deformation centre for a long time. Researchers analysed decades of satellite-based radar and GPS data to estimate what may have occurred beneath the surface. 
The intrusion of a magma body beneath Norris in the late 1990s caused trap fluids to erupt and move through the rocky maze above. Ground inflation occurred as fluids became trapped and pressure built up, while deflation followed as fluids escaped to other locations. Presently, magma-derived fluids may be situated just a mile or two below the Earth's surface. It's important to note that the new research does not indicate an increased likelihood of the supervolcano, which last erupted 640,000 years ago, exploding. However, the record-breaking eruptions of Steamboat Geyser, the tallest active geyser in the world, may be influenced by these geologic movements. Researchers also suggest a slightly higher risk of hydrothermal explosions in the basin due to the underlying changes. Exploring the complex and secretive geology of Yellowstone is challenging, but researchers agree that the rising and sinking ground can be attributed to the injection of a significant mass of magma and the fluids released during the eruption. During a podcast, astrophysicist Neil deGrasse Tyson and volcanologist Janine Krippner mentioned that Michael Poland, who is not affiliated with the new research, but works at the Yellowstone Volcano Observatory under the US Geological Survey, stated that our understanding of the dynamic nature of Norris Geyser Basin is only in its early stages. Another noteworthy discovery was the use of three-dimensional imaging to reveal a massive magma plume or conduit beneath Yellowstone, responsible for transporting lava and intense heat upward through the Earth's mantle. Researchers from the University of Utah utilized an extensive network of seismic sensors in and around Yellowstone National Park to study the behavior of seismic waves as they pass through different underground materials. Their investigation led to the discovery of a large banana-shaped body spanning 3,600 cubic miles and located half a mile deep, containing partially molten rock. This body, known as the Magma Chamber of Yellowstone, was revealed through 3D seismic tomographic imagery. Within a distorted plume of magma, supplying the shallower magma system that rises from the Earth's upper mantle in the northwest and extends 400 miles beneath, an even deeper and more significant feature emerges in plate tectonic theory. This significant new finding contradicts previous assertions that Yellowstone lacks a plume and it is supported by recent seismic data. Additionally, the 3D image highlights an intriguing detail. The plume does not originate 1,700 miles away beneath the Montana-Idaho border, as previously believed, but rather 125 miles away from a crucial upper mantle transition zone. However, Norris Geyser Basin, the oldest thermal area in Yellowstone with thermal features dating back 115,000 years, stands out. It also holds the distinction of being the hottest area, with temperatures reaching 459 degrees Fahrenheit, approximately 1,000 feet below the surface. Steamboat geyser in this basin exemplifies the rapid and unpredictable nature of this scorching region within Yellowstone. Historically, the 400-foot-tall geyser has had infrequent eruptions, with intervals ranging from 4 days to 50 years. However, since March of the previous year, Steamboat has been erupting as often as once per week. In 2018, the geyser erupted 32 times, breaking a record that was surpassed the following year with 48 eruptions. Although Helen Robinson, a geothermal expert from Glasgow University, who was not directly involved in the recent research, expressed her astonishment, stating, The blinking thing went nuts. While the geyser's heightened activity has captured the attention of the general public, scientists are particularly fascinated by the dramatic movements occurring within the basin itself. The Norris Geyser Basin, spanning 18 miles in length, has experienced dynamic changes over the years. Between 1996 and 2004, it rose at a rate of 4.7 inches, then decreased to 2.8 inches between 2005 and 2013. However, in late 2013 and early 2014, the basin suddenly began rising again at a remarkable rate of 5.9 inches per year marking the highest uplift ever recorded in Yellowstone National Park. This upward movement was abruptly halted by a magnitude 4.9 earthquake in March 2014 that shook the Norris Geyser Basin. From then until the beginning of 2019, the ground alternated between sinking and rising. As a result, the basin is now 5 inches higher than it was two decades ago. 
The cause of this chaotic activity has been discovered through increased scientific monitoring of Yellowstone's extensive underground volcanic system. At the centre of this system is a massive caldera known for its rare and enormous volcanic eruptions. To enhance monitoring capabilities, the Yellowstone Volcanic Observatory was established in 2001. Collaborating institutions include the US Geological Survey, National Park Service, Universities of Utah and Wyoming, and the State Geological Surveys of Wyoming, Montana and Idaho. The observatory is an extensive program utilising instruments to monitor earthquake and volcanic activity in the Yellowstone National Park vicinity. Geologists speculate that the upheaval in the Norris Geyser Basin began between 1996 and 2001, when magma rose nearly 9 miles below the surface. Radar and GPS data from satellites were used to track the deformation of the basin, which is located on a network of faults and vents known as the Norris Mammoth Corridor, just outside the youngest caldera on the northwest rim of the supervolcano. According to Jurizen, this intersection of weak zones would provide an easier pathway for magma to enter. The uplift event observed from 1996 to 2004 was caused by the intrusion of magma and, as the magma cooled, dissolved fluids were released from it. This process led to a reduction in the internal pressure of the magma body, causing it to deflate between 2005 and 2013, resembling a leaky balloon. It is likely that the ground descended again during this period. Since then, the intermittent rising of the ground can be attributed to the occasional trapping of escaping fluids in pockets beneath layers of rock. According to Poland, scientists have faced challenges in identifying and documenting this cycle of magnetism and hydrothermal activity. While the new model provides a reasonable hypothesis, it's not definitive. It is possible that sources of fluids aside from the magma body, such as recent heavy snowfall, accumulate in specific areas and intermittently leak out elsewhere. In his podcast, Neil deGrasse Tyson surmises that fluids derived from magma are currently present just below the surface in Norris Geyser Basin. The area is known for widespread hydrothermal explosion craters that have formed over thousands of years. These craters result from geological pressure buildup where scorching water violently depressurizes and rapidly boils into steam if the rock fractures, a phenomenon that is nearly impossible to predict. What are your thoughts on this? Tell us in the comments below.